Welcome to Xamarin University. My name is Rob Gibbons, and we're going to explore backgrounding in Xamarin Forms in this quick lightning lecture. In Xamarin University, we have a few in-depth courses dedicated to learning the concepts of backgrounding in iOS and Android. If you're not familiar with the concept, I highly suggest checking out those courses or reading our excellent documentation on the Xamarin Developer Portal. Backgrounding is the term we use for the process of allowing some of our code in our app to continue to execute while another app is in the foreground. On iOS, prior to iOS 9, only a single app is allowed to execute code at a time. The same holds true for Android. This is referred to as the foreground app. If you don't change your code to tell the operating system that you plan on running code in the background, your app will be forcefully terminated and removed from memory if your code attempts to execute in the background. Android actually does allow code to run in a background activity, but background activities are one of the first things to be terminated if the operating system needs more memory. Instead, on Android, we should use another special class called a service. One of the most common questions we hear is, how can we run these background tasks in a Xamarin Forms app? One of the best features of the Xamarin platform, and Xamarin Forms specifically, is the ability to share large chunks of our code across platforms. This is often true in the case of background tasks as well. The function that we want to execute, such as saving data or calling a web service, is going to be the same on both iOS and Android. Unfortunately, the way that these two platforms have evolved to handle executing background code is completely different. As such, there's no way that we can abstract the backgrounding feature into the Xamarin Forms library. Instead, we are going to continue to rely on the native APIs to execute our shared background task. We could try to abstract this functionality with interfaces and dependency injection, but the platforms are so different that this won't work very well. Instead, we'll turn to some features built into Xamarin Forms to help us achieve these goals and create robust apps. The Xamarin Forms framework has two features built into it that are going to help us here. The first is a simple way to quickly persist some data. The second feature, called Messaging Center, will allow our shared code to communicate with each platform in a loosely coupled way. We'll use this feature to build our UI in Xamarin Forms, and then send a message to the iOS and Android apps to kick off a background task in each platform's specific way, using its platform-specific API. The platform project will be able to execute its background APIs, and then call into our shared code to actually execute the shared task. As the background task is running, We'll also want to send messages from the platform projects back to the shared Xamarin Forms code in order to provide status notifications and updates to the Xamarin Forms UI. Now, there are three common backgrounding scenarios that we're going to look at here. First, we'll talk about persisting some state quickly when the user sends our app to the background. Then we'll look at long running or finite length tasks that are a normal part of our app's logic. These are important tasks that we don't want to be interrupted when the app is sent to the background, but we do want to continue to run our code without terminating our app. And then lastly, we'll look at downloading a file, which is handled as a background necessary application in iOS. Let's start with quickly persisting and loading the state of our application when it's backgrounded. Here we have a simple app to demonstrate backgrounding in Xamarin Forms. At the end of this video, I will give you a link to download this code to explore on your own. As you can see, the app has three tabs to demonstrate the three common scenarios for backgrounding. We'll start with the case where we simply want to save some state in our app. This would usually be something along the lines of saving the current state of a particular screen so that if the app gets terminated while it's in the background, we can load the state back up and the user can pick up where they left off. In this case, when we send the app to the background, we'll persist the date and time that we backgrounded it, as well as the value in the first name field. We'll start with iOS. Notice that the sleep date and the first name fields are empty. I'll enter my name, and then I'll click iOS's home button to send the app to the background. Now, let's bring it back to the foreground. As you can see, the first name field was persisted, and the sleep date now has a value. We can even terminate the application, and then relaunch it, and we can see that our values are indeed persisted. Let's do the same with the Android app as well. Again, I will enter 
a name. I'll click Android's home button to send this to the background. We'll bring up the app again, and you can see that the sleep date is now populated. The first name is still there. In fact, we can even terminate the app and then launch it again, and our values are persisted. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the code. Xamarin Forms can actually help us here without writing any platform specific code. In the Xamarin Forms app class, which derives from the application base class, we have three virtual methods that we can override to handle lifecycle events. These methods are onStart, which is called when the application starts, onSleep, which is called each time the application goes to the background, and onResume, which is called when the application is resume, resumed after being sent to the background. We can put whatever persistence code that we want here, maybe using SQLite or something like that. But be aware that this does not give us extra time to execute code on iOS. We are, we are still bound by iOS's five second time limit for its did enter background method. If our code takes longer than five seconds, the app can still be terminated. For simple state persistence, we can combine these override methods with Xamarin Forms Properties Dictionary, which is provided for this exact purpose. When the app is being sent to the background, we can grab the current values from the Xamarin Forms UI views and save them into the Properties Dictionary. We'll do this in the onSleep method. Then, when the app is coming into the foreground, either because the app is launching or resuming from the background, we can load the values back from the Properties Dictionary and put them back into the UI views. We can wire this up in the onStart method and the onResume method. And there we have it, very simple state persistence in Xamarin Forms. Next, we'll look at how to allow our long-running, finite-length tasks to execute while our app is in the background. Remember, we'll need to use the platform-specific APIs to allow the background execution. And we'll use Xamarin Forms Messaging Center framework to pass messages back and forth between the shared code and the platform code. In the Xamarin Forms XAML UI, I've declared two buttons, one to start a task and one to stop the task. The task is very simple. It will simply increment a counter and show it on the screen. Now, in a real app, this code would be some vital piece of code, like saving data to a SQLite database, calling a web service, calculating an algorithm, or some other task that you don't want to be interrupted. Now, when, when, when we click Stop, we'll update the label to reflect that action. Here in the Xamarin Forms code behind page for the long running page, I'm wiring up the start and stop button click events. In each one, I'm creating a new message and then using the messaging center to send that off to whatever code is subscribed to the message. In the case of iOS, the app delegate will wire up the subscription to our messages. When the platform specific code receives a new start, run, start long running message instance, we'll create a new helper class to handle iOS's backgrounding APIs. Here, you can see that we're invoking the UIApplication.SharedApplication.BeginBackgroundTask method. This is the iOS API that will allow our code to execute for more than five seconds. Once we have told iOS to expect us to run some code in the background, we can then invoke the shared task counter class's run counter method. This task counter class is defined in our shared PCL and it's used for both iOS and Android. All of the code in the iOS long running task example class that you see here is specific to invoking iOS's APIs. The task counter class is very simple in this case. It's just running a loop and it will send a new ticked message when it needs to notify the UI that something happened. Again though, this could be something much more complicated. This could be you're calling a web service or saving data. Going back to the app delegate, we also have subscribed to this stop long running task message. When this is received, we'll call the stop method to stop executing our counter. When the stop method is executed, we'll cancel our task by using the cancellation token source. When the exception is thrown, we'll send a canceled message, which the Xamarin Forms code is listening for. And finally, in the long running page, we'll subscribe to the tick message and the canceled message and we'll update our Xamarin Forms labels text property as appropriate. Over in Android, we'll take the same basic steps. 
in the main activity class, we'll subscribe to the start and stop messages. In Android though, the proper way to execute code in the background is by using a service. So here, we'll create a new intent declaring what type of service we need, and then we'll call the start service method. When the stop message is received, we'll call the stop service method. In the service, the onStart command will invoke our shared code. Again, this will just be the task counters run counter method. Again, the service's only responsibility is to handle Android's backgrounding APIs. The stop service method will call onDestroy in our service, which is where we will cancel our token source and we'll catch the exception and send the canceled message. The final scenario that we'll explore is downloading files in the background. The Android project will continue to use a service, just like the long-running task did. iOS, on the other hand, will use an NSURL session and iOS's built-in downloading capabilities. Let's check out the apps first. Again, in our shared Xamarin Forms XAML UI, I've declared a single download button. When we press that button, both in iOS and in Android, we'll start downloading our Xamarin Monkey image. While it's downloading, the platform code will send messages to the shared code to update a progress percentage indicator. When the download is complete, the platform will send the UI the path to the downloaded image. Let's go see the code. In the shared code, we will send a download message which includes the URL that we want to download. This helps to consolidate and share the download logic between both platforms. In the iOS app delegate, we'll subscribe to that download message class. When it's received, we can instantiate a new instance of a downloader class and pass along the URL. This downloader class is a wrapper around all of iOS's downloading APIs. We're not going to get into the intricacies of iOS's downloading APIs. Again, check out the Xamarin documentation portal for that. The important part as it relates to Xamarin Forms continues to be passing messages back and forth with the messaging center. Here you can see where iOS is notifying the UI of the download progress and also passing along the image path when the image is finished downloading. Back in the shared code, we have subscribed to the download progress message and the download finish message in order to update the UI. Over in Android, downloading a file is going to be very similar to our long running task. We'll subscribe to the download message and then create an intent. This time, we'll pass along the URL as some extra data and then we'll call start service to start our custom downloader service. The downloader service will also send a download finish message to the shared code when the image is completely downloaded. As we've seen, each native platform has some powerful APIs available to us to allow us to execute code while our app is in the background. Unfortunately, these APIs are different enough that they can't be abstracted into the Xamarin Forms framework. And that doesn't prevent us from using the APIs in our Xamarin Forms apps, though. Hopefully, the Xamarin University Lightning Lecture has been helpful in seeing how Xamarin Forms built-in capabilities, loosely tied to the platform APIs, allows us to execute those background tasks from our Xamarin Forms apps. All of the sample code and slides are available from the resources link associated with this video on the Xamarin Forms website. Thank you very much and happy coding!